Welcome back everyone. For those that are new here, welcome. I'm Dark Hour 717 and this is the weekly news review for the Star Citizen universe where we'll actually bring you the latest and greatest in news from the last week of Star Citizen. Before we get into all the news though, do me a favor if you enjoy these videos, hit that like and subscribe button and help me get the videos out to more people. For all of you that have subscribed, I definitely want to say thank you. This past week, we've seen quite a bit get released with the PU monthly report as well as more patches to the PTU as it is announced that they are coming to the final push. And of course, the running of the System 7 race season. Looking at the PTU patch first, we did receive another patch on Friday and as they continue to come out with new patches daily, it truly is coming down to the final days for the PTU. This is supported by the announcement from Jake Acapella stating that Star Citizen Alpha 318 is nearly out the door and on the live servers. As we mentioned earlier this week, in This Week in Star Citizen, we'd like to team up with you for the final push. Over the weekend, we are planning to run some critical stress tests on the PTU starting on Friday. We're putting out the call for as many of you as possible to grab your sword, bow, axe, pico plushie, or whatever else you've got on hand, and join us. This will greatly assist with gathering crucial data that will help us tackle any final remaining stability issues before the live release, which they're hoping to achieve next week. During this playtest, there isn't a specific testing focus other than to play in the Persistent Universe on the PTU server at the times listed below. Keep an eye out as you'll likely see many of us gallivanting around too. We plan on kicking off with one hour of testing on Friday at 8 p.m. Central US time, 2 a.m. UTC Saturday, and then doing multiple tests throughout the weekend for one hour each. The test times that they've selected occurred on Saturday at both 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, but are also occurring today on Sunday, March 5th at 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. Central Standard Time as well. These will last for one hour each day, so make sure to jump in and do whatever is possible to stress the servers out. Some citizens actually have posted some interesting replies to this already, including the desire to flood August Dunlow Spaceport with a wall of Finleys, many listing the individual known issues from the patch notes or including other issues that they're having in game. Some even pointed out that the stress testing barely will stress anything as it will be only over the course of an hour each day. And also questioning the testing of higher rep required missions as because of the daily patches, earning the rep to get higher paying missions has not been possible. We also got a reply with a detailed look into the roles in life of actor John Reese davies Patch 318 has been the longest running PTU to date for Star Citizen, but that is understandable as it is the single largest and most important patch to date as well. With more features, additions, and new content being introduced than any patch before it. As with any alpha gameplay, any patch release will have known bugs and is not likely to be released with zero issues. But in playing the PTU, it has been fairly stable even with the known bugs occurring. Many can be worked around and are not absolute game stoppers. So I am looking forward to hopefully see the final days of the PTU for 318. We do already know that the goal is to see patch 319 bring in the Invictus Fleet Week, which is typically the end of May, beginning of June. And we have already seen a number of exciting add-ins for 319, including salvage based missions, which I'm really looking forward to. Before we get there though, we do have the Stella Fortuna Festival coming up mid-March, usually on March 15th is the official date, which is the Versus version of St. Patrick's Day. Celebrated by dark green paints and colors, we will see the sale of the Ursa Fortuna, the Archimedes Emerald, and the Constellation Phoenix Emerald, which is usually on a limited availability. This will be happening on patch 318 on the live servers very possibly, or may even occur with the push of 3.18 to the live servers, depending on how the stress testing goes. So there's a lot to look forward to here in the next week or so, and seeing exactly when this will be pushed over to the live servers. This Saturday, we also see the System 7 competition begin, put on by Atmo Esports. These are the guys that bring you the Daymar Rally, Fight or Flight, Hurston Hurt Locker, and other events. With qualifiers running through the majority of the day on Saturday with 40 teams entered and only the top 16 teams advancing to the actual race series, the races themselves are a series through seven official races, not including the qualifier, all over Stanton. Races that will take place occur at the Snake Pit, Microtech, Orison, and yes, even the Buggy Track. How each team places earns points and most points at the end of the season wins the series. The qualifier was held at the raceway around the base of Arcorp Mining Area 141 on Daymar, and for the most racers, this is not an unknown course. 
with the top three spots automatically being filled by the top three teams from last year, System 7, this left 13 spots for the remaining 38 teams to compete for. And compete they did with teams from our own Amarox Fang, seasoned racers like Team Punch Buggy, Corota Racing, and even CIG themselves getting into the competition. Unfortunately, CIG did not make it into the competition, but many qualifiers posted times right around the minute and 33 second time frame. Amrox Fang, though, did have a rough go with the first two laps, but did qualify because of the miraculous efforts of Gravity Cat, pulling off a minute and 26 seconds time on the third lap for the fifth fastest time of the day. This was soon followed by Engineer Death running away and apparently being lost or attempting to kidnap Atmo Esports timekeeping official Brahms as he proceeded far off the course bringing the broadcast to a hilarious pause. Overall, the unofficial top 16 will be verified by Monday and you can check out the VOD out on Atmo Esports channel over on Twitch. The link's going to be in the description. We also saw this week the PU monthly report which highlights work done over the last month in the PU. We also received the Squadron 42 monthly report, which was released by email and will be posted on the RSI website next Wednesday. There are some interesting points in the PU monthly report, though. Last month, UK Vehicle Art approached the end of their work on the Argo SRV, which is the tugboat of the Star Citizen universe. And the final art phase is in progress, including Lod Zero and damage passes, and is expected to conclude with the final gate review and a go no go in March. Work also continued on Unannounced Ship, which passed its Lod Zero review gate and is well into the final art phase. A new variant moved into the Lod Zero phase, and after passing its Gray Box review in January, Detailing work on the exterior and interior is ongoing. The Crusader Spirit continues its gray box pass with a review gate taking place at the end of the month. The team looked at the MISC Hull C to fix any visual issues that occurred during the ongoing technical setup. And MISC Freelancer is undergoing some interior tweaks to accommodate physicalized components. We also see the gray box on an upcoming vehicle progressed. Testing was done simultaneously on the modeling process to see if the team can reduce the lot impact on production once they arrive at the final content phase. The Apoa, the Apoa Santokiai is currently in the gray box stage and is undergoing significant testing to see how far the team can take the secondary motion. So some definite interesting points here. Of course, we know that we're going to be getting the Scorpius and Terry's, which is accounted for in one of these lines, but there's definitely some additional information with the Argo SRV coming close to a go no go for launch into live. Is it possible that we may see it at Invictus or another time coming up shortly? It's hard to say. We also see listed the Arena Commander improvements with the new Stantons and locations being worked on and being ported into Arena Commander as well as the new Atmospheric Dogfighting Arena. Moving into feature mission teams, we also see listed several unannounced missions being prototyped, one of which sees players escorting ships as they quantum travel and land at various locations, potentially allowing players aboard to carry out tasks. So it appears there is possibly escort style missions coming down the road. As Jared also did mention that next week's Star Citizen Live would feature the mission feature team to do a dive into upcoming missions as part of the Road to 4.0, that they would not be discussing the investigative missions that we saw at CitizenCon, but a new mission style altogether. A link is going to be in the description to check out the entire report, and there's a lot there, so check it out. We also see the Galactopedia update hit this week, and for those that are lore enthusiasts, it is a collection of one full-length article and 20 short articles, all ranging from information on the Terranus system to Terran and the Great Traveler. Lots of great articles here for you to check out, and I will have a link in the description to do so if you love looking at the lore. And this brings us into this week's edition of Inside Star Citizen, and this week we take a look at the underground facilities with Underground Playground. In this episode, we do see a look at the EU Sandbox 2 team's redesign of the underground facilities. What we saw last year at CitizenCon made everyone excited for these redesigns. Currently in white box phase, the work continues to bring these to the verse. We take a look at a playthrough on Pyro 3 and we see the structure that is now making up the underground facilities and the landing pads associated with them. We get a look at a tour through the facility in its white box stage from the top level corporate offices down through the facility into the cargo area and the cargo shops and we continue through and down the elevators deep into the facility which brings us to the bottom of the facility in a large space that will be utilized for many different uses. These lower areas will also provide for multiple other entry points if you're in less than favorable reputation. 
The underground will be made up of several other wings and areas, though. The new facilities look as though they're going to be massive and offer great additional gameplay. As stated, anything that can happen and be done out in the verse will be possible to be done here in the facilities as well. This includes deliveries, bounties, assassinations, piracy, and much more. This is definitely something that is going to be a huge addition to the missions and locations in the game. With it halfway through the white box phase, there is still some time before we're going to see it in the verse though, and even in white box, these things are looking amazing. And finally this week we have a Star Citizen Live, and this week we get to meet and hear from the visual effects team, and while fairly standard and not much to take away on this, it is interesting that in Mike Snowden's discussion on what is being worked on, he mentions four interns, one being David, working on Star Citizen in what he said was the Misk Fury. David and Nazir are working on uh, Star Citizen. Uh, Nazir is doing like GPU conversions, David's working on Misk uh, Fury. And Yes, the Misk Fury. This is not a name we've heard before or previously, though CIG is no stranger to working on straight to flyables and other ships. We also know that Invictus is coming up, which is usually the second largest event for the Star Citizen outside of IAE. But what could this Misk Fury be? Time will tell, and Jared's reaction later in the show when talking to another guest suggests that he is aware that the slip occurred. Definitely an interesting show, though this mention of an unknown ship is the highlight of it. Links are going to be in the description below for the episode. I definitely recommend everybody check it out. And that is about it for this week. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know what you think or even your thoughts on what possibly the Misk Fury could be. Don't forget to check out the streams though on Twitch every Tuesday and Sunday night and here on YouTube every Thursday at 7pm Eastern Time. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check out the merch store, the Patreon, or even just hit that join button to become a member. We definitely appreciate the support and keep an eye out for our future giveaways. Thank you again and please be safe out there and we will catch you in the verse. <laughs>